It's UEFA Nations League action as Norway on the cusp of beginning what they hope will be a new era of breeding young, exciting and exceptional talent take on a revitalised Austria as both nations end their long hiatus from action in the wake of the pandemic. Hello and welcome into our studio coverage of Norway against Austria. It's certainly good to be back in the international realm. A good 290 days or so, give or take, from the last international action, if you can believe that. Ross Dyer alongside Matteo Bonetti. Is it good to be back for you, Matteo? <laughs> Oh, it's great to be back. And I actually have a notch on my bed counting down those days. And it's great to have matches that mean something. These matches replacing the international friendlies and very exciting competition. It is an exciting competition. Fans seem to have taken it to their heart. But you can be forgiven for thinking, well, what's it all about? Because basically the format is very complicated. They've tweaked it as well since the inaugural edition two years ago. Let's run it through quickly. 55 European national teams, that's all of UEFA, divided into four leagues by merit, A through to D. The group stage games are played both home and away from September to November, as Matteo said, replacing international friendlies. And those group stage games are very important. League A features the top 16 teams in UEFA. They're divided into four groups, and the four group winners will go on to the Nations League finals. Portugal, of course, are the champions from two years ago. Uh, two available playoff spots for this edition are open for the 2022 World Cup qualifiers. Now, that's a long shot, and there's no real need to get into the nitty-gritty of all of that. But it is a second chance for a lot of these teams, including Norway, who are still hoping to qualify for the European Championships, delayed, of course, because of the pandemic. But they performed well in the UEFA Nations League in the first edition, so now they have a chance in the playoffs. Yeah, and there are matches that mean something, which means that the managers are probably going to feel their best starting 11. You're not going to see massive rotations. And I think it's the first time that on the international scene, we've seen promotion relegation, where if you get into the Group A, you're facing the best competition, which is a great way to get you prepped for the major tournaments. But I think it's a very smart way to have football that is competitive, that matters, in between the Euro qualifiers, the World Cup qualifiers. Yes, and uh, with Norway, they've actually promoted themselves from League C to League B, which is why they're in Austria's group beginning games this uh, autumn. They have an absolutely fantastic talent on their hands, and they actually believe they have a group of talented international players now, an age that could become a real golden generation. But we have to talk about Erling Haaland. Of course. <laughs> yeah, he is absolutely generational. He's brilliant. Watching all of his goals, it's his size. He's six foot four. And his ability to run into space like a gazelle. He's a long strider, but he's so quick, Ross. He's got that lethal finishing in front of goals. He has the awareness. He can pick out his runs if he's going up against a high line. And he also has a touch. He's technical. He can play a pass. He can score with both feet and in the air. He can do absolutely everything. I was looking at the best under-21 strikers in the world. It's him, and it's killing Mbappe. I am so high on this kid. More than a goal every 90 minutes in a half season season with Borussia Dortmund. I mean, what's he going to do in a full season in the Bundesliga? Is he going to shatter the goal-scoring record? Anything is possible for Holland, and that is why Norwegians are so excited about him and the potential of him leading the line, what that can mean for Norway. Could they be the Belgium of the 2020s? Yes, well, the sky is absolutely the limit for Erling Haaland, who's yet to score internationally for the senior team, but he starts tonight, so maybe we'll break that record as well. Uh, just turned 20 in July. Talking about their opponents, though, Austria, Matteo, they've got a, a bit of a problem in that they're missing a couple of key players in David Alaba and Marco Anatovic, but they do still have Marcel Sabitzer. Yeah, they do, and Sabitza is actually going to have a much bigger role with RB Leipzig, his club team in the Bundesliga, with Timo Werner going to the Premier League. Sabitza is going to really be involved in creating a lot going forward. What I like about Sabitza is free kick taking ability. He is a beast from the set piece. He's got a great shot from distance, lovely technique. He can also create, but also watch out for the youngster, Christoph Baumgartner, another young player in the Bundesliga. You're going to hear that theme a lot. Austria is packed full of top division German players. Yes, yeah, so Baumgartner getting his debut at international level for the senior side tonight. So another one to keep our eyes wide open on. What are you most looking forward to in terms of the matchup, though? I think how Austria's defense handles the pace up front of Norway, Joshua King of Bournemouth and Erling Haaland, who can run into space. So if that Austrian defense... It, crawls higher up the pitch and they're around the halfway line those balls over the top from norway could be key in breaking down austria on the counter okay well we'll find out if norway are for real with erling holland leading the attack tonight in oslo against austria we'll be back with live coverage here on espn news stay with us